Bible is no longer in schools, very possibly. In fact, that brings us back to Lyra and Aquila. Lyra and Aquila, again. Over here we go, over here, the money for you. Lyra and Aquila. Lyra and Aquila, again. Lyra and Aquila. Lyra and Aquila in Codex are going to be port, port royals. That he becomes the ruler of regardless of any presider. And I'm looking for that face of an eagle. Regardless of any presider. Shalom and welcome to all of you lovers of Hashem. The last couple of weeks, we've been doing a continuing series on our Will the Real Mashiach Please Stand Up? Or Will the Real Messiah Please Stand Up? And that's why he's saying that no one's going to have to teach this. You're not going to need rabbis. You're not going to need uh, any any kind of teachers because now you will know. Now it's a matter of what are you going to do about it. And that's where Mexico got its name from, which is a fascinating thing. And I'm telling the whole world, if you want to be free under that golden eagle, you find the matches that golden eagle. And I know it's Mexico. But that's the face of an eagle right there, I'll tell you. Well, my name is connected with Raptor. Portero. Because in Latin, the Portero is the gatekeeper. Mashiach. Mashiach, first of all, is not only a man, it's a meta-historical force. I'm looking to prove that Michael, the door is open for his blessing. I want to like bring this a full circle. As you're speaking now and talking about the juxtaposition between God being in charge and director. It's Aquila, and when that person rises and his names match that in lexicography. Because the idea of Mashiach is translating the Torah into something that man has to accomplish. Again, this is the whole Jewish view of Mashiach, which is so different than many other people because it's not its not divine, it's divinely inspired, but it's quite human. Mm -hmm. And it's Hashem's giving us the ability to make a change in the world. He is a human being. He doesn't have wings. He's a human being, a descendant of, of David and Solomon. What's his role? And we see this in the Western world. We see this in, in and I'm going to say this, I might get in trouble, but it, it's in the Christian church. See, I wanted to ask you, this is exactly what I wanted to ask yeah. you, and, and um, 
you know, you've written this book and, and I was very, very impressed with it. But when we have the Messiah, is it going to be really peaceful? Are we going to be flying on wings of eagles? Are we going to be just like today, but there'll be peace in the world? Meanwhile, guess what you're still looking for? You're still looking for the root of this word. I mean, when you ask somebody, hey, what about that Michael movie? They go, oh, that was so cute, it was so cute. Their mentality is so warped. It has to be. Because they can't continue that line and come up with any real evidence that matches the dictionary. Because they've already wiped that line out with their other princesses and queens and kings, you see. And the truth is, is that this has already defeated that in everybody's eyes and they don't know it. So while those people are saying, we're waiting for this thing to come from the sky. Somebody has been ordained and that person can prove it in astrophysiology. He can bibliology. Lexicography. Numbers. Music. It goes on and on. On and on. This guy could be the Messiah. He could be the Messiah. We need to investigate this further. He realized that it was a real physical task to be accomplished in the physical realm with the tools that God gave us. There are undoubtedly thousands of people today who are descendants of King David. I know some of them. And among them is a person, is a man, who could potentially be the Mashiach, who is ready. Well, I think this show is going to be a great time because we are going to continue on with our discussion of the real Mashiach.